Hey guys, my name is Doug with infotainment.com. Today we're working on the 2019 and up new body Ram truck, specifically the heavy duty 2500 through 5500. Today we're gonna talk to you guys a little bit about the tail light options for your truck. Now most of you who have a tradesman or a bighorn trim level have just the incandescent base model tail lights. Well, once you get into the upper trim levels, you get the LED tail lights, which look phenomenal at night. Um, it's a great safety feature and it's also aesthetically an awesome upgrade. Now we're gonna take it a step further. Not only are we going to upgrade the tail lights, but we're also going to add blind spot monitoring. So our tail lights come in two different variations. They come with blind spot monitoring and without blind spot monitoring. So if you just wanna upgrade your tail lights to make it look a little cooler, um, that is an option as well. But in this particular build, we're going to add blind spot monitoring. We are also going to select the um, tail lights with the black caps. Now, this is more of a sport look. Um, you also have the versions with the red caps. And basically what that is, is it's a cover for the blind spot monitoring module. So you do have the option uh, between those two different variations. Um, we do include plug and play wiring, whether you're just doing a tail light upgrade or you're doing the tail light upgrade with embedded blind spot monitoring. Those of you who are doing the blind spot monitoring option, we do include an, a programmer by obdgenie.com, which will program your, your body control module to allow for that feature to be activated. So a lot to digest. We're gonna go ahead and get started with the upgrade. Hey guys, so today we are installing uh, LED taillights in this Ram 2500 with the factory blind spot monitoring. As you can see, we're gonna be removing the old halogens and putting these LEDs, LED lights in. So our first step is we're starting on the driver's side. There is two Torx 25 screws here holding the taillight assembly in. Go ahead and remove those. So after we remove the two Torx 25s, we're gonna go ahead and wiggle the taillight assembly straight out towards me and undo this connector right here. There's a little red slide, just like some of our other videos. Push that out. So from the back of the taillight assembly, this is, where your, this is where your wire goes to through this hole in here. We're gonna go ahead and feed this back through and this is actually gonna be replaced. We take our handy dandy pry tool, go ahead and pop this off right here. So we have access to this clip now. So once we get this loose, we're gonna go ahead and pull this out. So we have our exposed connector. So once this is loose, we're gonna take our new driver's side plug, plug this in like so, go ahead and lock it down, go ahead and plug this back in, just like that. Go ahead and feed this back up through where it came from. Watch out for falling dirt. and we'll go back up to the truck bed assembly. So once we're back up at the truck bed, we go ahead and clip our wire harness in. We're gonna go ahead and do the red clip as well. And then make sure that this harness slides into that slot so it doesn't get hung up. And we're gonna go ahead and attach the two Christmas tree slides this way and push backwards. So you'll hear, you'll hear a pop, clips in there. We're gonna go ahead and replace our two Torx 25. So we're gonna repeat our same steps that we did on the driver's side, on the passenger side. We'll start with these two Torx 25 bolts. Go ahead and pull this tail light straight out. Undo our clip. Set this aside. So before we go under the truck again, I wanna show that this has an additional wire loom. So this actually feeds to the other side around the trailer hitch. On this side, we're doing the same thing as the driver's side. Go ahead and pry this out for easy access. And undo this gray clip here. Go ahead and take this and set it aside. 
Take our new harness, clip in, press your gray tab in, and feed this back up. Place back in. And so this wire, we're sending this up over the trailer hitch, over the frame, and back over to that side there. So once we get it over the frame on the passenger side, we can actually slide it up between the trailer hitch and the spare tire. Going up and over, it's a little bit longer way. Take this. Once we get to this side here, we can feed it over the trailer hitch once more and over the driver's side of the frame. So this will be just hanging right here. You can see your passenger side, or your driver's side here as well. So after we've run the harness across the, the tailgate, we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and clip our passenger side taillight in and go ahead and slide the taillight in to its Christmas tree clips, straight back, and replace the two Torx 25 bolts right here. So now we are done with our taillight installation. You can see they already look great. And go ahead and move to the wiring. So in preparation to run our wire loom from the tailgate to the firewall, we're gonna go ahead and remove the driver's side splash shield. So to remove this, there are eight eight millimeter bolts that surround here. There's one 10 millimeter bolt right there. And then two, uh, two more eight millimeter bolts and two of these Christmas tree clips. So we'll take our pry tool. That's what the clips look like right there. Set those aside. And there's one right up front here. There's one more hidden clip under this ledge right here. So go ahead and remove that. We're gonna go ahead and remove all these eight millimeter screws here. one 10 millimeter bolt right in the front. I would start from the front, go ahead and lift over the suspension tower. So the fender liner will just drop out here. Go ahead and navigate it out and just watch your paint on the way out. So back to the tailgate, we are gonna go ahead and take our harness, plug these two clips in. We're gonna wanna zip tie a couple of these out of the way. You can take a couple zip ties, just put this on whatever wire limb you can find, not really specific. Go ahead and do that. So we're all set to get our wire loom to go up and over the, the fender well here. So we're gonna route this all the way back. And we're gonna send this up and over the fender well here. So you can see this harness right here. That's what we're gonna follow. So we're fishing our wire loom up and over this fender well here. So to be able to reach it coming from the other side, we're gonna remove these five eight millimeter screws here and take this splash guard out. Go ahead and set that aside. You should be able to reach your wire now. So to start out, we're gonna take our wire loom, we're gonna zip tie it along the frame here. Um, there's multiple points where you can kind of do it. Um, I would recommend somewhere here, along this side right here, and then we're gonna follow the frame. You'll see uh, a couple different wire looms already going, so just go ahead and follow those and zip tie all the way to the front. So as you can see, that's a nice tight fit along the frame rail here. So after we get to the end of the truck bed, we're gonna make a small right and we're gonna follow this along here. Don't install anything on this as this is your parking brake. 
so you don't want that wire getting pulled. As you can see, this is right in front of the fuel tank right here. That's gonna be one of your last zip ties. So we'll follow this. We'll actually pull, go ahead and pull this through. You can see there's already a couple different wire looms here for various options on these trucks. Go ahead and bring this through. So once we get the wire loom through, we need to find a place to go through our firewall. There's a couple of different places you can go. You can either go through this boot right here. It's pretty busy in there though. So it's very crowded and very tight. So what we're choosing to do is to use this block off plate right here. And that's held on by two 15 millimeter nuts on the inside of the firewall. So once you've undone the 15 millimeter nuts, go ahead and pull this out and you see you'll have a perfect place to go through with your wire. So once we've drilled a hole in that firewall there, we're gonna take our wire and go ahead and feed it through. After you've fed it through, we're gonna plug it in on the inside, but we're also gonna use some weatherproof silicone around this hole to make it watertight. So that is where our wire is coming through. As you can see, it's a nice clean hole. And once we've brought this through, we're gonna go ahead and plug it into the BCM. So once we fish the wire through, we're gonna go up and there's two modules right here that we're gonna plug into. This is your CAN IHS junction, and we can plug it into any one of these open slots at the top. It's very difficult to see on camera, but this is where you're gonna be plugging into. Don't plug it into the left side, that's a different control circuit. So this is where we're gonna be plugging it in, right in here. There's open slots on top of this wiring right there. So go ahead, slide in till it clicks and you're all set. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you how to run the OBD Genie programmer in the 2019 and up heavy duty Ram truck. Now, in order to run the Genie programmer to enable the option that you're looking for, you also have to install temporarily a security gateway module bypass. Now this is just installs temporarily, just to allow you to program the vehicle's body control module for the specific feature you're looking to enable. Now, the security gateway module is located behind the speedometer, so I'm gonna show you guys how to get to that. It's not as hard as it sounds. Um, the whole process, including the programming and, and reassembling, takes about 15 to 20 minutes. So let's get started. All right, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is lift up on this little pad up here. Now, it doesn't matter if you have the smaller radio or any of the different uh, factory radios, there's only two screws that hold this center stack in place. So you just wanna get access to those two screws, they're seven millimeter. Now, once those two screws have been removed, you can just muscle this out. You can use a dash pry tool, um, whatever you want to do, but we're not gonna disconnect any of this. The only reason why we're pulling this out is to get access to this panel here. So we're, I'm actually just gonna muscle it out. You notice it gives you a little bit of room here. All we have to do now is pull on this little panel here just enough to loosen it up a little bit. Now what we're gonna do is pull out the uh, speedometer bezel here. So what you're gonna wanna do is on the lip of the bezel here, you can put your pry tool in or a regular screwdriver. You're just gonna wanna pry down on it to release the clips. Then just pull it out. You know, so it just has retaining clips. There's no screws that hold that bezel in. So um, on, the, on the right side of your speedometer, you're gonna have the, the little part that you popped out earlier. You don't have to disconnect this, just kind of set it off to the side. Same thing on the other side, just pop that off. 
set it, set it off. Now you're gonna notice two seven millimeter screws on this instrument uh, or this um, steering column panel. So you're gonna go ahead and, and remove those two screws. I like to go ahead and put the column down a little bit, but basically you just pop this out. And then you'll notice two lower screws on the actual speedometer itself, and then two screws at the top. So go ahead and remove those four. All right, now that all of our screws are out, we can simply just pull the cluster out, flip it upside down, and just temporarily disconnect it. Behind the speedometer cluster is where the security gateway module is located. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna disconnect those two connectors that are in the side of that module. These two connectors here, we'll simply just plug into our bypass device. We can just set it back here. We can go ahead and install our cluster. We're just gonna set the cluster back in place. We're not gonna actually screw it in. We're just gonna set it back in place. Now at this particular point, now that the security gateway module bypass is installed, now we can run our OBD Genie programmer in the OBD2 port. All we have to do is put the vehicle in the run position um, and then we can go ahead and plug it in. It takes about 30 seconds, you'll see a green light illuminate and then once um, the green light comes on, you know you're all done. All right, what we're gonna do is go ahead and put the vehicle in the run position and we'll go ahead and plug in our Genie programmer. You'll see a series of lights. As soon as you get the solid green light, you can go ahead and unplug it and won't be needed anymore. All right, we now have the solid green light so we can go ahead and disconnect it. You'll also notice that your speedometer cluster and your infotainment system will reset as well. All right, guys, we went ahead and turned the truck off. Um, now all we have to do is just um, remove the um, bypass device, plug those two cables back into the security gateway module, and just reassemble everything. So as you can see, very easy to do. We've been in here for maybe 12 minutes. Um, so what we're gonna do now is just kind of put it all back. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put this closeout panel in. You'll notice how it kind of has this lip here. You're gonna wanna stick that in and then pop it into place. Um, the other side is the same way where the ignition switch is. All right, now when you install the uh, speedometer bezel, you're gonna wanna clip in the bottom first and then slide the top back and it'll pop back into place. All right guys, so we just got done installing our Ram 2500 LED tail lamps. 
they actually have blind spot monitoring in them, which is awesome. We went from a standard chrome halogen fixture to these awesome looking LED fixtures. The blind spot is a huge safety feature that we can add, now add to this truck, and it actually has trailer blind spot monitoring as well, which is, which is great. Come check us out on infotainment.com where we have a huge array of upgrades for this Ram 2500 and all sorts of different vehicles. Thanks for watching.